The 90s were the best decade for cars. There is some millennial nostalgia here. And in this video, we will take a trip back in time to see how we imagined the future through some of the best concept cars of the 90s. 1990. From the first year of this decade, I want to highlight two concept cars. The first is the Plymouth Voyager 3. Unveiled at the 1990 Chicago Auto Show, the Voyager 3 represented a unique fusion of versatility and automotive innovation. This groundbreaking vehicle was essentially a two-in-one concept. The front section served as a nimble three-seat compact car, fully drivable on its own. Alternatively, the rear portion, accommodating up to five passengers, could be seamlessly attached, creating an impressively elongated vehicle. However, this extended design likely posed significant challenges when it came to parking or maneuvering in reverse. Both sections of the Voyager 3 were equipped with four wheels and featured a four-cylinder Chrysler engine under the hood. Remarkably, two decades later, this pioneering creation found itself mentioned in a sentence alongside the phrase, the nadir of American auto design, reflecting the bold and unconventional approach it embodied in an era of automotive evolution. And the second is the Chevrolet Corvette Serv 3. While it took eight generations for us to finally see a mid-engine Corvette, Chevrolet had been exploring the idea of creating a sports car with this configuration for some time. One of the notable prototypes in this journey was the Corvette Serv 3, Chevrolet engineering research vehicle, which made its debut at the 1990 Detroit Auto Show. This remarkable vehicle was brimming with groundbreaking features, including all-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, and an active suspension system reminiscent of the Formula One race cars of that era. Powering this engineering marvel was a turbocharged Corvette ZR 15.7-liter V8 engine, seamlessly mated to a six-speed automatic gearbox. The addition of scissor-style doors added an extra touch of exoticism to the already striking carbon fiber and Kevlar bodywork. However, while the Serve 3 was a tantalizing glimpse into the future, it wasn't quite production ready. We had to wait patiently for nearly two more decades before Chevrolet finally introduced the true mid-engine Corvette we now know and admire. 1991. From this year, I want to highlight the Audi Avis Quattro. Before the iconic Audi R8 graced the streets, there was the remarkable 1991 Audi Avis Quattro. This concept car took its name from the famous Berlin Highway Avus, short for Automobile Verkehr und Übungsstraße, which translates to Automobile Traffic and Training Road. Avus was renowned for its long straightaways, which not only accommodated regular traffic, but also witnessed thrilling auto races. This highway also served as a testing ground for various manufacturers to conduct high-speed tests during the early to mid-1900s. Audi's famous aluminum-bodied auto union racers made history there in the 1930s, and the Avis concept car paid homage to these legendary machines with its distinctive bulging wheel arches and a lustrous aluminum-like finish. The Avis was meticulously designed to house the Volkswagen Group's potent W12 engine, which Audi was actively developing for its future models at the time. Little did we know that this visionary concept would pave the way for the eventual debut of the Audi R8, which would come to pass several years later in 2006. 1992. That year we saw two very interesting concept cars. The BMW Nazca C2 marked the middle installment in a trio of BMW concept cars from the early 1990s. This sleek creation represented a lighter, reimagined version of its predecessor, the 1991 Nazca M12, and was succeeded by the open-topped marvel known as the 1993 C2 Spider. All three of these remarkable concepts were crafted under the creative guidance of Ital Design on behalf of BMW, and shared the potent V12 engines also featured in the prestigious 8 Series Grand Tourer. In the case of the Nazca C2, the heart of the machine was a 5-liter V12 powerhouse, delivering a commanding 350 horsepower. This remarkable engine reportedly propelled the Nazca C2 to a remarkable top speed of 193 miles per hour. The second was the Renault Raccoon. Deemed aquatic capable, was equipped with a potent twin-turbo 3-liter V6 gasoline engine that powered all four wheels. However, what set it apart was its unique lack of conventional doors. Instead, access for the driver and passenger was provided through a canopy, a design choice that could have posed challenges in the event of an upside-down landing. Innovations such as satellite navigation, remote entry, adjustable ground clearance, 
and the use of cameras in lieu of traditional rearview mirrors may seem commonplace in today's automotive landscape. However, when the Raccoon made its debut back in 1992, these cutting-edge features were nothing short of groundbreaking and truly ahead of their time. 1993. While there were concept cars like the Chrysler Expresso, the Plymouth Prowler, and the Ford Mustang Mach 3 that appeared that year, I'd like to focus on one in particular, the Porsche Boxster. In the early 1990s, Porsche faced financial struggles due to high manufacturing costs and declining sales of the aging air-cooled Porsche 911. To revitalize their lineup, they introduced the Boxster concept car. The Boxster aimed to replace the outgoing 968 with a fresh mid-engine Roadster design inspired by the iconic 1950s 550 Spider. This all-Porsche creation featured a flat-six engine based on the 911's power plant. Debuted at the 1993 Detroit Auto Show, the Boxster concept garnered significant attention and anticipation, but enthusiasts had to wait until the 1997 model year for its production release. Many still consider the original Boxster among the best concept cars of the 90s, if not all time. 1994. Do you remember it? While Chrysler had its share of retro-inspired designs in the 90s, it's essential to give credit where it's due. And Volkswagen played a significant role in igniting this trend with its memorable 1994 Concept 1. This Beetle-inspired concept car instantly captured the hearts of Detroit auto show enthusiasts, sparking an overwhelming demand. In response to the clamor, Volkswagen embarked on a journey of nostalgia, presenting a series of six additional concepts over the next 25 years. But hold on, we might be mixing up our iconic VW models here. The Concept 1 eventually underwent a transformative journey, emerging as the beloved new Beetle just a few short years later. This modern reinterpretation went on to enjoy a robust and enduring presence for over a decade. 1995. That year we witnessed some truly innovative ideas, which is why I want to recognize four concept cars that left an impression on both enthusiasts and those who weren't necessarily connected to the world of cars. The first is the Chrysler Atlantic. European automakers weren't the only ones succumbing to retro fever. Chrysler, even reaping the successes of the 80s, could not resist the trend. Among the standout retro-inspired concept cars from Chrysler in the 90s, the Chrysler Atlantic shines as one of the most captivating. Evidently drawing inspiration from the classic Bugatti Type 57 Atlantique of the 1930s, an era often hailed as the golden age of automotive design, free from the constraints of modern safety standards, the Chrysler Atlantic exuded elegance, fluidity, and sheer awe with its generous 128-inch wheelbase and sculpted contours. Nestled beneath its bonnet lay a straight-eight engine, ingeniously crafted from twin-dodge neon power plants, generating an impressive 360 horsepower. It didn't require an industry expert to realize that such an automotive masterpiece would never see mass production. But that was beside the point. This tribute to Art Deco design was a heartfelt love letter to the world of automobiles, crafted by none other than Chrysler's visionary leaders, Bob Lutz and design maestro Tom Gale. The second is the Ford GT90. A full decade prior to Ford's commencement of deliveries for its groundbreaking mid-engine Ford GT supercar in 2005, and nearly three decades after the GT40's historic victory at Le Mans, the Ford GT90 concept sought to answer the question of what a modern-day GT40 could resemble. At the 1995 Detroit Auto Show, the GT90 appeared nothing short of revolutionary. Gone were the soft, flowing curves, and there was no concerted effort to recreate a classic, as was the case with the later GT model. Instead, aside from the iconic doors that sliced into the roof, reminiscent of the original GT40, the GT90 represented a wholly novel interpretation, seemingly influenced by contemporary computer-aided designs and the world of video games. Remarkably, the GT90 would become a fixture in several driving simulation games of the era, offering enthusiasts a virtual opportunity to experience its quad-turbocharged 6-liter V12 engine and Jaguar XJ220 based chassis. It was reported to reach an astounding top speed of 253 miles per hour. In the end, Ford produced just a single GT90 prototype, and while it was slated for auction with RM Sotheby's in 2009, coinciding with Ford's financial challenges during the Great Recession, the car was withdrawn from sale at the 11th hour. 
Today, one can only presume that this exceptional 90s concept car still finds its home within Ford's storied warehouses. The third is the Mercedes-Benz VRC. The 1995 Geneva show unveiled the Vario Research Car, a vehicle that drew attention for its front-wheel drive and innovative active body control system. However, it was one unique feature that truly stole the spotlight. In a departure from conventional ownership models, customers of a potential production version of this car would effectively own most of the vehicle but rent its body. Remarkably, there were four body options, all constructed from lightweight carbon fiber reinforced plastic, a sedan, an estate, a convertible, and a pickup truck. Upon purchase, the owner could select one body style, but the real innovation lay in the ability to swap it out for any of the other options at a Mercedes dealership in just 15 minutes. While this concept was undoubtedly intriguing, it's fair to say that the idea did not find widespread adoption in the automotive world. And the fourth was the Opel Max. Debuting as an Opel in Geneva and a Vauxhall in London, the Max was a contender positioned to challenge the smart Fort Wu, but it ultimately remained a concept car that never materialized into production reality. Built upon an aluminum frame, this diminutive urban vehicle measured just under 10 feet from bumper to bumper. The Max resurfaced at the Geneva Auto Show in 1996, now equipped with a one-liter three-cylinder petrol engine, marking the sole feature from the concept that eventually transitioned to production. Notably, this engine found its way into the Corsa model the following year. 1996. From this year, I also want to highlight five cars that were very interesting. Without directly harking back to any specific previous model, the Alfa Romeo Nuvola exuded a distinct 1930s aura. Featuring a separate body mounted atop a robust steel space frame, it was powered by a 2.5-liter twin-turbo V6 engine that undoubtedly produced a magnificent symphony of sounds. The name Nuvola carries a dual significance. In Italian, it translates to cloud, but it also pays homage to the legendary racing driver Tazio Nuvolari. It was Nuvolari who, in a remarkable feat, steered an Alfa Romeo to victory at the 1935 German Grand Prix, triumphing over formidable rivals from Mercedes and Auto Union. His triumph left high-ranking Nazi officials in disbelief and remains an iconic moment in motorsport history. In the 1990s, Ford and its renowned Cosworth Performance Division were actively engaged in crafting engines for the championship auto racing team's IndyCar series, which would later become part of IndyCar. To bridge the gap between the high-speed world of racing and the everyday driver's dream, they conceived a concept car that drew inspiration from open-wheel racing design. The result was the Ford Indigo, a collaborative effort with kart chassis manufacturer Reynard unveiled during the 1996 auto show circuit. At its heart was a mighty 6-liter V12 engine, ingeniously assembled from a pair of Ford Duratec V6 power plants. The chassis, reminiscent of contemporary kart racers, boasted a carbon fiber monocoque construction and advanced pushrod suspension. This visionary concept car captured the imagination of many, even though a production version remained but a dream. Interestingly, the innovative V12 engine developed for the Indigo went on to propel several Aston Martin models during Ford's ownership of the esteemed British luxury brand. Today, the sole drivable Indigo concept resides within the personal collection of Ford Tuner and NASCAR team owner Jack Roush in Michigan, while another static styling car, or perhaps two depending on the source, finds its home with another dedicated collector. In stark contrast to the Indigo, the Ford Synergy was a unique six-seat sedan boasting an exceptionally aerodynamic and lightweight aluminum body. Under its hood, a one-liter petrol engine served as the generator within an otherwise fully electric powertrain configuration. The Synergy represented Ford's visionary concept of what a mid-sized sedan might embody in 2010. However, the reality differed significantly as consumers witnessed the release of a revised version of the fourth-generation Mondeo instead. Unrelated to the Kansas newspaper bearing the same name, the Lincoln Sentinel concept car hailed from Ford's luxury division and made its grand entrance alongside the Indigo at the 1995 North American International Auto Show in Detroit. Although both vehicles were powered by the same V12 engine, their overall characteristics diverged dramatically. 
The Sentinel was a spacious sedan featuring frameless windows, impressive 20-inch wheels, and an imposing length that exceeded 18 feet. Its front grille design paid homage to the classic aesthetics of the 1955 Lincoln Continental. The charmingly adorable Renault 50 made its grand entrance at the 1996 Geneva Auto Show. Its moniker paid homage to the 50th anniversary of Renault's post-war automotive legacy, symbolized by the iconic 4CV. Interestingly, the 50 bore a striking resemblance to the 4CV, which initially debuted in Paris, although it didn't hit the market until 1947. While the 50 flaunted a retro aesthetic, beneath its vintage exterior lay a modern construction featuring a carbon fiber body resting upon the aluminum framework of the Renault Spider sports car. Notably, the innovative rear-mounted D-engine would eventually find its way into the first-generation Twingo, replacing the Cleonfonte unit that had been a stalwart power plant in Renault's lineup since 1962. So, let's jump ahead to 1997, where we need to spotlight five cars that would set the tone for what we'd see in the new millennium. As this year rolled around, Porsche had introduced its Boxster production car. Mercedes-Benz was busy crafting its SLK Roadster, and BMW's Z3 was generating quite the buzz in the market. Dodge had its high-powered Viper, designed for the bravado of macho drivers. But what about a more compact, agile, and crucially, budget-friendly Roadster for the masses? That's where the Dodge Copperhead concept made its grand debut, captivating audiences at the 1997 Detroit Auto Show. In terms of styling, the Copperhead bore a striking resemblance to the Viper, yet beneath the hood there was no roaring V10 powerhouse. Instead, it housed a 220-horsepower, 2.7-liter V6 engine paired with a 5-speed manual gearbox. This combination positioned it competitively against the trio of German roadsters, while its chassis was a customized adaptation of the Viper platform. Interestingly, there was a point where the Copperhead had received approval for production only for financial considerations to deter this exciting prospect. This left American performance enthusiasts pondering the tantalizing possibilities of what might have been. In stark contrast to Dodge's Copperhead concept of the same year, the Dodge Dakota Sidewinder emerged as a massively potent sports truck. Underpinning this beast was a chassis crafted by renowned race car manufacturer Riley & Scott, while its impressive power output of over 600 horsepower was derived from the 8-liter V10 engine sourced from the Dodge Viper GTSR competition car. The Sidewinder could have found a receptive audience in Australia, where muscular utes hold a special place in the hearts of enthusiasts. However, it appears that no concrete plans were in place for the production of this remarkable concept. Volkswagen entrusted Ital Design with the task of creating a four-wheel drive sports coupe that would serve as a showcase for their groundbreaking 5.6-liter W12 engine, a power plant ingeniously formed by merging two 2.8-liter Volkswagen VR6 units. This extraordinary vehicle called Volkswagen W12 made its grand debut at the 1997 Tokyo Auto Show, setting the stage for an exciting lineup that included a Roadster variant. Later, an even more formidable 6-liter iteration known as the Nardo took the spotlight. It earned its name from the famed Italian test track, where it achieved an impressive 200.6 miles per hour average speed over a 24-hour period. Although the car never saw mass production, the innovative W12 engine found its home in various VW Group vehicles, starting with the Volkswagen Phaeton and subsequently making its mark in other esteemed models, including the Bentley Continental. In the mid-1990s, Fiat took control of Alfa Romeo, a revered Italian brand. However, concerns arose as Alfa Romeo's cars started deviating from their traditional routes, moving toward front-wheel drive platforms and utilizing more Fiat parts. Ital Design, led by Giorgetto Giugiaro's son Fabrizio, shared these concerns about Alfa's heritage. To honor Alfa Romeo's racing legacy, Fabrizio Giugiaro conceived the Alfa Romeo Shigera concept car. Initially based on the front-wheel drive chassis of the 164 sedan, it underwent a transformation into a mid-engine all-wheel drive configuration reminiscent of the Alpha 164 Pro Car Racer, although it didn't inherit the V10 engine. Instead, it boasted a powerful twin-turbocharged 3-liter Busso V6 engine, generating an impressive 400 horsepower. The Shigera's construction featured a blend of aluminum and carbon fiber, giving it an exotic appeal. 
It retained the iconic Alpha Grill and incorporated aerodynamic insights from Formula One advancements. Initially considered for limited production, the project later shifted toward creating a few race cars. Unfortunately, neither of these ventures materialized. 1998. One year before the decade came to a close, design choices took a bolder turn, yielding concepts that would soon become reality within less than five years. Aston Martin introduced Project Vantage, which eventually evolved into the Vanquish. BMW unveiled the Z07, later becoming the Z8. There was also the Plymouth Pronto Cruiser, which transformed into the Chrysler PT Cruiser, and the Citroen C3 Air Concept, which would later become the Citroen C3 Pluriel. However, I'd like to emphasize three cars that would significantly influence the next decade. While the Chrysler Kronos featured distinctive headlight styling, its design was notably inspired by an earlier Chrysler concept, the Delegance from 1953. Interestingly, certain design elements from the Kronos later resurfaced in the Chrysler 300C, which made its debut in 2004. The substantial 17-foot length of the vehicle was accentuated by a sharply inclined windscreen, a sleek and low-profile roofline, and a cab rearward design. Propelling this impressive machine was a robust 6-liter V10 engine. The Jaguar XK180 made its striking debut at the 1998 Paris Motor Show, marking a remarkable 50th anniversary celebration of Jaguar's inaugural XK model, the iconic XK120, which had astonished audiences when it first graced the stage at Earl's Court in London. Incredibly, the development of the XK180 was completed in a mere 10 months, partly because it shared its underpinnings with the Jaguar XKR, albeit with a shortened and reimagined body. Both vehicles were powered by the same supercharged 4-liter V8 engine. The retro-inspired bodywork was skillfully crafted by Abbey Panels, a renowned name with a storied history that included the production of bodies for Jaguar's legendary C-Type and D-Type race cars. The Jeepster name first graced an automobile in 1948. Fast forward half a century, and the concept vehicle unveiled in Detroit was a formidable off-roader, meticulously engineered to conquer the challenging 22-mile Rubicon Trail within the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Notably, the Jeepster featured an adaptable ground clearance system, offering a versatile range of adjustments spanning 4 inches. Its power plant was driven by a potent 4.7-liter V8 engine, drawn from Chrysler's innovative Powertech family. This engine would later make its official production debut in the same year, finding its home in the second-generation Jeep Grand Cherokee. And in 1999? In this year, we would see notable concept cars, including the Renault Aventime concept, the Mitsubishi SSU, the Honda Insight concept, and the Bugatti's EB183 and EB218. However, I would like to focus on the BMW Z9 GT concept. This was a four-seat coupe with carbon fiber body panels over an aluminum space frame. The styling was similar to that of the later second-generation BMW 6 Series, though the concept also featured gull-wing doors which were not present on the 6 Series. The Z9 was powered by the 3.9-liter V8 turbo-diesel engine, which had just made its debut in the BMW 7 Series, and was fitted with an early version of what became the iDrive Communications and Entertainment System. Another curious concept car was the Ford O21C. A creation of industrial designer Mark Newson was crafted by Ghia and unveiled in time for the 1999 Tokyo Motor Show. Slightly more compact than the initial Ford Ka generation, it boasted increased height and width, along with a 1.6-liter gasoline engine driving the front wheels through an automatic transmission. Some of the most practical innovations included a rear section that could be folded down like a drawer in furniture, serving as a trunk. Comfortable access to the cabin was ensured by its suicide doors, which lacked traditional handles, instead they used buttons for opening, and the absence of a B-pillar. In addition, the front seats could be rotated 90 degrees to facilitate passenger entry. The lighting system featured large LED headlights both at the front and rear. Newson's relative novelty in the automotive realm possibly contributed to his ability to fashion a design of timeless elegance. It could also explain why the O21C has enjoyed multiple exhibitions since its debut, gracing prestigious venues like the London Design Museum and New York's Gagosian Gallery. 
This level of exposure is somewhat unusual for most concept cars. It was certainly an exciting ride through the best concept cars of the 90s. These incredible designs and groundbreaking innovations represent a time when the automotive world dared to dream big. If you enjoyed this nostalgic ride down memory lane or feel that we missed an iconic 90s concept car, let us know in the comments below.